Right, here I am. Yeah, Suffolk Triumph. Hold my own. Oh, speed twin 1200. Yeah, got to take it out again. Oh, yeah, um, I'll talk about them when we get going. As soon as I remember how to turn it on. <laughs> yeah, marvellous. Oh, into gear. Obviously, it's a Triumph. It lets you know. Uh, oh, bar end mirrors. Oh, look at that. We're off and we're in sport mode. Crikey. Oh, that's nice and smooth, isn't it? But we are in a 30, and uh, thanks to Bertie, I need to be a bit careful. Yeah. Um, but what we got? Uh, Speed Twin, 1200. Um, bar end mirrors. Yeah, not Mickey Mouse. There you go. Um, but I'm used to them now, uh, except this one's not set up properly. So let's just. Oh, that's it. It was set up, it had just been knocked. Um, so, yeah, round clocks, absolutely marvellous. Uh, three rider modes, sport, uh, rain, and road, as you know. Um, don't think there's a fourth one on this. Um, tw that marvellous 1200 engine. Um, it does look like rain, so I might have to pop it into rain mode before we finish. Um, and here we are, 2000 revs in fourth, doing 30 miles an hour. And it's pulling, that's about the extreme of it, so I'm going to go down. Yeah. Um, uh, this one's in orange. Yeah. Uh, seat height, about 800 and... 10 millimeters, something like that. Uh, not too, not too much. Oh, we're in a 50. Ah, oh, blink of an eye, and we're there. I've got to say, this is running very, very smooth compared to my T120 and other T120s I've ridden. Um, yeah, I'm quite impressed so far. Brake horsepower, 100 brake horsepower, I <laughs> know, um, that's quite uh, quite nice isn't it, uh, and torque about 107 I want to say, I don't know, I'll maybe have to check when we stop and do the walk round. Um, so what are the big differences? Well. I don't think it's got a grab rail, and I'm pretty sure it hasn't got a centre stand, but I'll check that as well. But what it does have is uh, Mazoki uh, upside down forks, yeah. So trying to keep this baby tamed. It's obviously got the upgraded swinging arm as well from the T120, which all helps to keep it a lot more stable. Um, all the switch gear and everything, just standard, all very simple, there's not too much to go wrong. Oh, some are very squashed there at the side of the road. Um, and all good quality, look at that, it says Speed Twin, it says Speed Twin there, marvellous. Uh, what we got on the information? Uh, 984 miles this has done so it's pretty much running isn't it but here we go we'll get down here and it does go well yeah, picks up okay. So there we are, national speed limit. Hope you can still hear me. Because it's quite blowy today as well. But well, that's quite nice, isn't it? So, on the uh, 
dual carriageway on a windy day no problem at all uh, legal speeds yeah and maybe even a little bit more um, you do have to hang on a bit but the bike is dead comfy um, fuel is doing about 53 to the gallon this one on its average fuel and I should imagine it's a demo bike that won't be taking it easy no um, so there you go but what we're going to do now we're going to test this new suspension out on the washboard road I'll also just see if they're self cancelling I don't think there will be they're not on my Thruxton so I doubt there will be on this Once again, we're up to the legal limit. We've got a bit of dual carriageway further ahead. Um, that is just like running over a washboard, which is why we call it the washboard road. But it is a really good test for the suspension. It's the sort of ripples you'd get actually at a test centre. You know, if you're testing a car or something like that, or even a motorbike. Yeah. So here we go onto the dual carriageway and onto the washboard road there where it started already. So what you can usually tell is my voice develops a little uh, vibration. Yeah, it does. Um, and it is holding out okay. Yeah notice I don't know if you can see that I just wonder if the headlamp was moving I suppose it's just the suspension working the bumps do get bigger as well as you get onto this so further apart but bigger bumps but it seems to be holding just just fine so next onto the Suffolk Road over gravel the brakes seem to be just fine that acceleration, all that torque, this high torque engine is just incredible never fails to thrill so on this road we've got big people small people um, cars horses uh, bicycles dogs uh, we've had mattresses fridges balloons we've had the lot yeah, it's bumpy as hell, covered in gravel. But we've also got quite a few potholes. But it is such a lovely road, and pretty typical of what we have to put up with in Suffolk. Yeah, once we get off the beaten track. But here, I'm going to stop because I've banged on too much and you can have a look at it yeah so there we go oh and it's a marvellous view not many out sailing straight into neutral side stand down and over we go ignition off let's have a look there you go oh. 
the Jaffa. Yeah, I seem to be riding a lot of orange at the moment, but this looks pretty special, doesn't it? So here we are, Triumph Speed Twin 1200 in orange. Yeah, um, I didn't think I'd like it. Out in the wild here, I think it looks pretty decent. Yeah, uh, the mudguard, just looking at it from here, seems a bit short. Straight up onto that radiator, gonna have to get an extender. I know it's not with the styling of the bike, but there you go. Twin brakes uh, on the front, Brembo, of course, and uh, Mazoki suspension upside down. Uh, then that pipe, very sporty compared to the Bonneville, sort of upswept, makes a fantastic noise. The swinging arm is really beefed up. Compared to the T120, which is basically the same as the T100, but it's got a 1200 engine producing over 100 newton meters of torque. Well, that's got to have an effect. So, on the speed twin, it's abraded. Little short mudguard at the back. I know number plates, tail tidies, I know all the arguments for that, but you know, trying for working to fixed uh, regulations both in terms of sound and things like where the number plate goes the seat looks quite thin but it's really quite comfortable to sit on don't know what it'd be like for Mrs Tame on the back and there's no grab rail or anything like that guess it's a different sort of bike to the Bonneville which also doesn't come with a grab rail or anything nowadays and as you'll see, no centre stand. But moving on to the positives, this bar and mirrors work just a treat. They really do. Um, the brakes, absolutely fine. Uh, let's get round. The clocks, just wonderful. Yeah, I do, I do like one of the best features of the Bonneville range are, are the clocks, I think. And all the switch gear, solid, all works. This has got blacked out bars, sort of goes with the orange and the black, doesn't it? Um, yeah, uh, nicely decorated. Not, not a bad view from the office, is it, really? The orange, do you like the orange? Like I say, in the wild it doesn't look bad. I don't think, anyway. No quick shifter, anything like that. Seat height. 809 millimeters um if, is that a problem for you it's, it's not very high is it I, I think you struggle to get a bike that actually comes much lower unless you go cruiser so there you go it is quite heavy it's a 1200 cc engine but it's easy to manage and move about so there you go what i'll do now is get on and we'll do the census test yeah Right, back on board, ignition on, Brrr, ding, lovely, love that sound. And there we go. <laughs> lovely sound, yeah. Uh, into gear and off we go. Yeah, back on this. Uh, we're into a 30 here, which is why I haven't set off like a lunatic. Um, So it's on to the census test. You know, it's what we use to make decisions about the things we like. Some people think I'm crackers. Oh, that's fine, I probably am. Um, but the first sense, of course, is taste. Well, this would be like Orangina or Orange Crush. Yeah, all oh, sweet sugary drink orange flavour of course if you went for a different colour no doubt it'd be a different flavour but that's what I'd say about this yeah um, 
then we've got smell what does it smell like well it's a brand new bike now, again people think that it's not really a sense that we use but it is because because um, sorry it hit a bit of gravel there um, if it smelt of oil and petrol you'd be worried wouldn't you um, and I have in the old days let's be honest buying a bike it would this doesn't this just smells of a brand new engine you know a particular smell isn't it just hot metal maybe a bit of warm plastic and that's it no smell of oil no smell of water nothing then to look at it looks like a classic triumph it does you know, a modern take on the triumph bonneville with some practical advantages the alloy wheels yeah they're, they're not spoke and a lot of people like the spoke to make it look like they're riding an old old bike but it, uh, from a practical point of view cleaning and stuff like that yes you've still got a clean spoke and what have you but the alloys are going to look better longer you know and they're going to be they are going to be easier to clean I think anyway having bikes both with spokes and with alloys for, uh, so yeah a really nice looking bike and quite striking in this orange and then of course touch and feel what does it feel like and we do touch our bikes what do the bars feel like what do the brake levers feel and they all feel like quality and I have said this a number of times with Triumph they're a premium brand they are a premium brand and they build premium motorcycles so of course the quality is there I think for some people they might complain that the quality is not high enough um, but the others will be perfectly satisfied with it I always think when I get on a Triumph I feel like I'm riding I don't feel like I'm riding a budget bike I feel like I'm riding a, a premium bike which is what you want particularly when it gets to the amount of money you have to pay does that mean they're expensive? I don't, I don't think so you know you pay for what you get and that's not doing any other bikes down at all I don't you know don't get me wrong on that you know the Mazoki forks the Brembo brakes that upgraded swinging arm the extra tweaks to the engine and a bit of a roar from the exhaust that extra torque <laughs> lovely and then the sound it's just fantastic I love I love the sound I prefer the sound of the Bonneville that's me this sounds very naughty uh, more like my Thruxton which I also love so yeah again fantastic when you consider the hoops that manufacturers have to jump through regarding emissions and so it's got a little burble listen to it <laughs> I, I used to have a dog sound like that it used to bark and when you told it off and say stop barking it'd stop barking and do like this indignant sort of blah 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 under <laughs> as he walks away yeah that's what that reminds me of and what I'll do now is I'll wait till we get back off the dual carriageway yeah so yeah 
a quick blast down the A12 and we're back into a 50 uh, and onto the sixth sense. I think before we do the sixth sense, we'll just have a recap of what we've actually got. We've got that 1200cc high torque engine pushing out just over 100 brake horsepower and over 100 newton meters of torque. We've got Brembo brakes to stop you and we've got Mazzocchi uh, front forks on the front. I think it's just Triumph on the back but I'm not sure. They do look different but I think that's the colour scheme. We've got that beefed up swinging arm that comes on the Thruxton as well. We've got bar end mirrors. I don't know again if they're standard. Quite possibly they are. We've got three rider modes. We've got the classic analog clocks that are obviously electric. We've got something that does between 50 and 60 miles to the gallon. A seat height of 809 millimetres. I'm six foot two, 34 inch inside leg. I find it really quite comfortable. The seat looks a bit thin, but it's perfectly comfortable. Yeah, oh, you know, you don't necessarily want a big fat seat because you can sink it. They can become uncomfortable, can't they? So that's what we've got. Um, how does it make me feel? I love it. I really, really do. I know if Stuart Fillingham would just say, oh, you're just a fanboy. Uh, maybe, maybe so. I don't know. If I am, I'm a fanboy of all motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. Would I have one? Yeah, of course I would. I've got the Thruxton though. And that does it for me. Is this more comfortable? I'm perfectly comfortable. I, I tell you what, I'd rather be on the Thruxton doing 90 miles an hour down the road than on this doing 90 miles an hour down the road. So, you know, it swings around roundabouts, isn't it? At a slow speed, yeah, this would be more comfortable. Long journey, I suppose, possibly, um, as long as you're staying sensible with the speed. Talking of which, best slow down. So there you go. So let's get it parked here. Indicator off, side stand down. We already know it doesn't have a centre stand. Suffolk Triumph, marvellous place. Look at these bikes. Um, there you go. Triumph Speed Twin 1200. Here at Suffolk Triumph. It's just marvellous. <laughs>